I'm Dr. Benjamin Brinesma. I'm the amputee director at Mary Freebed uh, Rehabilitation Hospital. We are making this uh, video to try to educate you on the different uh, stages that you will go through when you have your amputation. Typically, after your amputation, you're in the hospital for a total of three days. Your surgeon may want a rehabilitation physician to come and see you. What we would do uh, as a rehabilitation physician would come to your room, we'd interview you, we would uh, talk to you about your social situation, what your home is like, what your physical activity is like prior to your amputation. Uh, we then would discuss uh, different rehabilitation options with you, and that could be going straight home or coming to a rehabilitation hospital. During the consultation, we can also educate you in terms of um, the uh, prosthetic and rehabilitation process in terms of the things that you will go through. Um, if we feel that uh, you would benefit from acute care or acute rehabilitation, we would admit you to uh, a rehabilitation hospital. The average stay at Mary Freebed, uh, the hospital that I work at, is 10 days. After that, you will typically will be discharged home. It takes about four to six weeks for your limb to heal. After it is healed, the prosthetist will work with you, building an artificial limb called a prosthesis. That typically takes about three to four weeks to build. After it is built, you will work with a therapist to teach you how to walk. Depending on the type of prosthesis and the level of your amputation, that can take anywhere from four to eight weeks. You are going to have a lifelong re relationship with your prosthetist as he's going to have to make changes in your prosthesis as you will change shape, you will change strength, he will have to change alignment in the prosthesis, as well as uh, fix any broken parts. You will have a team that will follow you lifelong also, and that usually includes a nurse, a physical therapist, a rehabilitation physician, as well as a prosthetist. For, for any patient, you know, the ultimate goal is that they get back to enjoying their lives, their leisure interest, um, being independent with all the things that they um, were independent with before. And by having a team approach, we get the best value for the interactions so that if you need therapy instruction, it's a available for you. If you need prescriptions, Dr. Bryansman is happy to provide those for you. If you need prosthetic adjustment, we can provide that on site for you. I think all the way through that um, optimism has helped a great deal to get me to heal faster, to get me walking faster. We just want to let you know that in this uh, entire process you will not be alone. You'll have a team of specialists that will help you get through this uh, amputation and lead a fulfilling and um, rewarding life. If you are aware of a pending uh, amputation, there are some things that you can do to prepare yourself uh, to allow for a better outcome. We want you to keep your lower extremities stretched out and your body strengthened as well as to make sure that you're in best aerobic physical shape. You will experience pain after you have an amputation. There are two types of pain. One is pain in your residual limb, which is the part that is still there after surgery. Your surgeon will work with you on controlling that pain with medication. There's another type of pain called phantom pain, as, and it's also associated with phantom sensation. Phantom sensation is the sensation that the uh, part of your limb that is missing is still there. You may actually feel your foot, you may feel uh, numbness or tingling in your foot, or it might feel that your, you might feel that your foot is itching. The best way to treat the phantom pain is with stimulation of your residual limb, and that can be with patting, rubbing, uh, massaging, or putting some weight um, at the end of your residual limb. If this does not work, your physician can treat you with antidepressant medication or anti-seizure medication. It's not because you're depressed or have seizures, but these type of medications can help with phantom pain. 
The other techniques that can help with phantom pain is biofeedback, relaxation, or mirror boxes. So after the accident, of course, you know, it's, it's of course very uncomfortable when you have some swelling. So it takes time for healing. But during the process, they would give you medication when you needed it. After you have your amputation, you are usually discharged within three days. Um, it is very important for you to continue to protect your residual limb. You do not want to bump it, and when you are moving about, you want to be very careful so as not to fall and land on your residual limb. Well, right, right away when I was um, in the hospital, the doctors and nurses, they took care of all my wound care, and I didn't really have to focus on massaging or anything. At that point, it was leave it alone, keep it clean, and um, let it heal. The average stay at the hospital that I work at is 10 days. After that, you will typically will be discharged home. It takes about four to six weeks for your limb to heal. So in inpatient physical therapy, you're gonna focus um, a lot on developing good strength and range of motion out of both legs. Um, but particularly we're worried, we're concerned about that the amputated side has really good flexibility because having that good flexibility is going to um, prepare you for using a prosthesis. Well, physical therapists in general um, will start working with a patient really within the first 24 hours after an amputation. Um, they're going to start getting them active and moving again and physical therapy is, then is part of the whole process from learning to move around and become independent in their in their home setting without the limb and then if they are a candidate to get, to get the prosthesis then they will come to physical therapy to learn to walk on the prosthetic as well. We're also going to work on helping you become independent with transfers which would include getting between moving between the wheelchair and your bed, wheelchair and toilet, wheelchair and a tub chair. Uh, wheelchair in the car and and also a transfer to be able to get up and down from the floor uh, just in case um, you would have a fall. So when I was in the occupational therapy they taught me many things that I would have to deal with when I got home. One of them of course was you know washing clothes as an example and of course my husband had washed all the clothes at the first time around but I said Theo I can do it myself. Now when I um first got here to Mary Freebed, they set me up on a schedule of therapies and they'd do that each day where I would have um, like an hour or two of physical therapy which was um, working with the legs, the muscles, you know, your arms and everything. And then there was an hour of occupational therapy which was they would show me how to do transfers from my wheelchair onto like a toilet or how I'm going to get into the shower, how I'm going to you know, cook food, stuff like that. By discharge, we'll have trained you and your family to the point where you all feel comfortable going home, that you can manage getting around the house and um, getting, every, getting in and out of the house so that you can get to your doctor's appointments independently. What I have found to be the most successful in terms of dealing with your emotion is to have a mentor come and talk to you. A mentor is someone who has already had an amputation, has been through the process. They can go over the uh, techniques that they went to that helped them, and probably the best thing that you will find F with a mentor is to see how well they are doing. It takes about four to six weeks for your limb to heal before it can accept a prosthesis. You will be fouled by your physicians for the healing of your limb. When it is healed, we will set you up with a prosthetist who then will make the artificial limb for you. The first thing I want to reassure you is that getting and using an artificial limb should not be a painful process. The overall timeline for the fitting process for a preparatory prosthesis is somewhere between two to four weeks. That is to say that you will have your cast taken on day one, you have an evaluation device to walk on within the first week, and then maybe a couple of follow-up visits to ensure that's fitting and functioning properly, and then that will be fabricated or finalized 
in week three or four, sometimes as long as six weeks, so that you can now return to the community with your first preparatory prosthesis. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. We would come twice a week and we would spend, you know, an hour with him and little by little he would be building up what would be a prosthetic for me to put on. Well, when I first started the fitting process, um, first John had to cast my leg basically and um, he made a, a temporary socket so that um, we could test out the volume of my leg. That allows you to begin initial weight bearing. We can establish the length of the prosthesis, the initial angle or alignment of the prosthesis, and begin some tentative walking to get you familiar with the device. Following a successful test socket fitting, which may take a few visits to get it right, um, we'll go ahead and fabricate your first prosthesis. Now typically you're going to get two prostheses during the course of your first year of amputation. Get the confidence. Once you got the confidence, you'll do it. And, and, and I'm so happy to tell you that where I was before and where I am now is just like night and day. It's just been a real journey. And I'm able to walk and I'm so excited about it. Well, after I got done with my inpatient therapy, then it was time to uh, finish healing and then start my outpatient therapy. The outpatient therapy being where I would actually use my uh, new prosthetic leg and um, learn how to use it, learn how to balance, learn how to walk and uh, so many other things. I mean, like I, I can mention going upstairs that kind of the challenge I'm at right now, um, but crouching down to pick things up and um, um, just, just, just moving around, walking around a curve, a, a corner, doing things at home, setting the table, back and forth. You know, all those things are obviously more challenging now, but it's, um, it's, it's not that bad. Once they get the prosthesis, then they're coming for therapy. If it's a baloney amputee, they're gonna come for about six to eight weeks. If it's an above knee amputee, they're gonna come about 10 to 12 weeks. Therapy usually starts out at three times a week, and then we cut back to twice a week once they're starting, starting to use the prosthesis at home. So at the first outpatient visit, we're gonna to check to make sure that their range of motion and strength programs are, are going well at home. And then we're gonna make sure that, did they have any trouble when they got home? So we'll help troubleshoot mobility problems if they get home and they say, oh, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that I was gonna to have to let my dog in and out and I'm having trouble getting to the door to do that and we can help you know, solve problems like that. For the below the knee amputee, learning how to walk again is a fairly straightforward process. Initially, we do some simple standing and just short distance walking so that they can get familiar with the pressures associated with the new socket. Learning to walk for an above the knee amputee is more challenging and more complex. But most above knee amputees won't be able to be um, proficient in household community use with a cane for usually six to 12 months after they start using the prosthesis. Um, they just need a time to get used to using the prosthesis. So a lot of times patients will come back six to 12 months later for a second bout of therapy and will focus then on um, moving away from that walker and becoming independent with a cane. I, th I think the main thing that I wish all amputees knew is that you have a choice on what providers you pick. Um, that patients should take the time and research what physician they're gonna use to follow their rehab care, what prosthetist they're gonna use, what therapy facility that you're gonna use, check it out. Do they have parallel bars? Do they have facilities where they can practice things like in home-like settings? Uh, do, you, do you feel like the, pro, the prosthetist, the therapist, the physician, that the, whole, that the whole team is listening to you and what your goals are and that they are um, set up so that they can respond very quickly to any issue that you're having? I think if, you know, if patients take the time and research that out and find out for themselves what's going to work best for them, um, that, this, that they have a much more successful outcome. I'm really glad I came to Mary Freebed because I've heard that they're the best around. 
and all the attention I've had and all the cases they've had in the past and they've been able to apply that to my life. Life brings you down a path and you go down that path. You don't, uh, I don't second guess and say, well, I, I really uh, wish something else or, or I, oh, it's too bad that I can't do something the way I want. There's a way to do it. It's, you just have to be taught that. And the people here at Mary Freebed, they have a lot of experience and they can help me learn what I want to learn in my challenges ahead. And I, I think that it's so important. If you, if you not get one thing more than I say right now, remember, have a positive attitude. I just feel like I'm here this far because of all the care that I got here at Mary Free Bed. And I appreciate it so much.